Welcome back, folks. We've got another not so exciting video, but we're doing something to the truck. Old Betty here, as you know, is going to the Camera 500, and I have a few oddball things to get ready um, or take care of on this truck. Nothing major, just uh, some uh, support stuff. I don't know. Um, what I want to do today is I have a cooling fan that I want to put in here. My friend Todd actually gave this to me. This was in his uh, 4VT powered Ford Bronco. Uh, he has a different radiator and fan set up. And so he gave me this in trade for some parts I gave him. Um, this is a... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So kind of at the very tail end of a cold that's lingering. But anyways, this is a stage 2 fan kit, whatever that means. But I will tell you one thing. Um, he's tried this out in his Bronco where it starts to get over 200 degrees. Pop those on like full blast. It brings it right back down to 180 fairly quickly. This 4BT I have in this truck doesn't really start to overheat when you're until you're really giving her the beans. Uh, but even that still hits about 190. I don't think I've ever had it over 200 degrees. Um, but because we're going to be running this in the summertime uh, and we're going to be going low speed, um, we need some cooling fanage going on. Now I do have a pusher fan in front here, uh, but it's, uh, it's not as good as having two fans pulled directly from the radiator. Point of this video and the goal is to get the fan mounted and hooked up to my bow switch. Uh, switch panel, which I will show you that in this video also, and um, yeah, we'll be controlling the fans with that. Um, I have actually two switches, two buttons dedicated uh, for each fan. So if we just need one fan to kind of maintain a temperature, we can run that. If we need full chooch, we can run both fans. I'm not going to bother putting any kind of temp sensor in the engine just because this thing normally does not need a fan until you're um, really working it in low speed, low airflow conditions. So, uh, anyways, with that being said, um, I have some bits to mount this rate uh, cooling fan. Um, we're going to hang it. Um, thanks, conveniently, it's got these two tabs right here that are riveted in. Ouch. This one right here, and this one right here. Um, I gotta drill them out a tiny bit to, for the screws that I'm using. Um, but this will hang it on the radiator, and then just down below here, where top, my friend Todd had these screws in, we'll run those transmission mount uh, deals, um, and that'll kinda just keep the bottom from flopping around. Um, the problem he had was when we originally put this in his Bronco, we were running the, um, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. We were running these, you know, all the way through the radiator and hanging this. And what happens is, is those zip ties uh, act as like a saw and the vibrations over time ended up ruining his radiator in there. So um, we definitely want to hang this because this is actually fairly heavy. This is probably about 10 pounds, um, even though this is aluminum, but the, you know, all the weights in the fans. But um, <clears throat> uh, we want to hang this off the radiator physically uh, using these tabs right here. And then um, we'll just keep this tight against the radiator using the um, cooler zip tie deals. So I better hold that a little bit better. Excuse me, tubes. Yeah, just pretend you didn't see that. There, it's like a hot dog in a hallway now. Okay. I wish these wires were pointed down, but that's okay. And my nose, I swear to God, my nose is just this in your mouth. Oh, I think we can hang it right there. Now, 
Ah, I'll get the other drill and just hog her out. Nice. Except, I don't like all the burrs that are on that. That ought to do. I think we'll probably make a little wiring harness and it'll go through this loop down and around town and then go to our those switch. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is take my little zip tie doodads, get them fed in the uh, bottom of the radiator there to hold the bottom just so that's not flapping around and we're good to go. Radiator ain't going nowhere. We only need one mount. No, we need So here's how I'm doing my wiring harness. Um, this is the same gauge wire that they got on the fan wiring here. It's about a 16 gauge. Um, that's what I have here. So we're going to rock this. Uh, so black is obviously going to be ground. Uh, because I'm running both fans individually, um, what we're going to do is for fan number two, or fan number one, which is going to be the one on the hottest side of the radiator, I'm going to make that red. And then fan number two, which is on the cooler side of the radiator, um, we're going to go yellow on that color coating. And that just helps me remember which one's which. Now on the bow switch here, which we'll get into in a little bit, um, I love this thing because not only did the cover keep all the mud out from my last adventure, um, they give you a nice little layout of each doodad here. Um, it's fairly straightforward, so well, shoot, they even got braille right here. No, I'm just... I got a whole pack of wiring. I think it comes with black, white, blue, yellow, red, and purple. I might be forgetting another one, but it's like 30 bucks on Amazon. They look like this. And yeah, pretty cheap, decent wiring. Um, haven't burnt the truck down yet. Now the bow switch down here does have um, high amp relays, but it also has uh, fuses all online. So er, we don't have to run any inline fuses or breakers or whatnot. It's all done in the switch box. And that's why I recommend uh, to anybody who's adding accessories and wants to control everything, um, you know, decently, um, I recommend um, the Vol switch, aux beam, S pod, those type of units just really help make things easier and simpler for the most part, but safer. Um, I know some people talked about uh, with their switch panels, they make it so they're switching grounds. That's another option you can do, but you're still gonna wanna run, you know, separate fuses and that's when things get kind of messy, unless you really put the time in to make it nice. Going this route, everything's all contained in one box and you don't have any extra fuses and random nonsense and this way it's a little bit easier to track down what the hell are these wires going to. I'll put a link down below in this video for the Vo switch, which you can get on Amazon. Um, there's also the aux beam and S-Pod as well. S-Pod's uh, the top of the line one I think because it's got a nice little touch screen and uh, you can do a lot more uh, with that but for my purpose and budget 
uh, aux beam or vo switch are my two uh, choices. Okay, before we uh, run the wires into the vo switch, um, we need to strip back a little bit of insulation and then we're going to tin the ends up. <clears throat> That gives the wire a little bit of support, but also so that we're not just cranking down on bare conductor. I'm gonna switch you over to the GoPro. Someone needs a new belt and or have it tightened. She must not have a boyfriend. They can fix her car anyways. She literally started it up and had it in reverse as it started up and rolled out. Not good. Okay, got my bare wires here. Just want to put a little bit of solder on them. Not good. Okay. So you can see here we've got four little plugs here. We're going to take a couple of them out. And then we'll uh, run our wire through the nut here and then the two into here. And then this will thread in and sandwich everything right here. So I'll go through the nut and then we have to remember that red is our um, right hand side radiator fan and then yellow is our left hand side radiator fan oh you know what I don't have enough wire I can't tape this end up just yet or I can do that. <laughs> it's adjustable. See? Okay. I can live with that. Something like that. Yeah, that'll do. Now, on the switch here, our switch box. We have multiple deals here, and on this one, they're all the same amperage. Uh, the aux beam, you have to kind of strategically place your uh, stuff based on how much power it pulls. This one, we don't have to worry about it because everything is the same. It's got big fat relays. <clears throat> it's got 30 amp fuses, so yeah. So on my panel, in the truck, which I'll show you in a moment, uh, switch seven and switch eight are dedicated for the fans. So we'll use uh, switch seven for the hot side, which is the passenger side fan. And then switch eight is gonna be our uh, driver side number two fan. It's slightly confusing, but um, I'm going left to right for uh, order of priority, so. Switch seven is gonna get, or uh, actually I guess we could switch this around. So switch seven will get the, uh, uh, hot side fan. I need a cross point screwdriver. Now, this is gonna be a little tricky. Sorry if you can't quite see well. I 
get that wire in there like that, like so. And you just snug her down. And then this other one's a little bit easier to uh, navigate. I'm gonna make sure it's in there all the way. Snug her down. And put the nut in. And then you tighten her down on these ratchet too. Which is on, so we should have driver side fan or passenger side fan. That's awesome. Well, tubes, that's it. We're done. We got a cooling fan set up. Technically, I have three fans, but this one right here, gonna end up probably getting rid of. Um, but we got a really nice, kind of low profile fan set up that'll work really well for this uh, engine. It'll, that'll, these are <laughs> plenty uh, to keep this engine cool, so. I'm pretty happy to have that in there now, so now I want to get into stop and go traffic or if I'm hauling something or whatever, um, I can click those fans on using the control panel on the dash. Oh, also, down below in the description box, I have links for the Vo switch and the other units I've mentioned. Um, the fan kit, um, came from my friend Todd, but he got it from someone on eBay. I don't think they make the fans anymore. But um, there's a lot of other kits out there um, that are similar to this that work just as good, if not better. So those you'll have to look for, but the other stuff that I mentioned that I can get links for, down below. So thanks guys for watching, and gals, if we have any. <laughs> and uh, We'll see you later.